Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. Yes. Now you, you you started out as a model, you know. Then from there you veered uh, into acting. Why did you dump modeling for acting? Well, I did not dump modeling. I naturally gravitated to what had become the new fad or the new trend in the entertainment okay. industry at that time. You know, all the while that I modeled, I was in school. You know, I was modeling and going to school at the same time because um, modeling was not exactly a profession or more yeah. or less a vocation. You know, it started first of all as um, a hobby and from there it graduated to becoming a vocation because yes, I could earn money and do good things with that money, you know. But that was not my primary concern, rather. It was my education. And how did it start? Um, there was no intentional, you know, um, efforts to become a model. Yeah. Then I was doing my national diploma at Yaba Tech, that's Yaba College of Technology. And one of the days I came back from lecture, I was just in front of my um, hostel reading the notice board when someone came, you know, all of a sudden to say that his name was East still because he's alive. Uh, Patrick Owen from Linters Advertising then, you know, Linters was of course the flagship of um, advertising industries in Nigeria and that um, they were looking for a new face to run the peak milk campaign. Then it was um, Charles Amoy, a top model that was a face of peak milk but his contract had expired and they were looking for a new person. So apparently they had you know, done several casting and they didn't get quite what they wanted. And uh, the studio was mandated to go to the field to scout for a new model. And then when they asked me if I was interested in modeling, I said, well, yes. First, have I modeled before? I said, no. Are you interested? Yes. I said, well, the reason why it's asking is because um, I fit the bill of what they wanted to be the new face of pig milk in Nigeria and West Africa. And if I was interested, I said, yes. So, he went to, uh, with me to my room, um, asked me to give him some of my pictures, which he would present at the studio, and told me that um, in about two weeks' time he'll be back to let me know if um, I made it or not. You know, this was all the days of uh, GSM, so there has to be a fiscal contact. But lo and behold, the very next day he came back to say when the pictures were presented at the studio, everybody unanimously agreed that I fit the bill of the new face for pig milk. That was how I went to Linters. I did the job. Of course, it was a very good one. I had a very good lunch into modeling. You know, so from then, I started doing um, other, you know, top notch jobs uh, from then to McLean's. Yeah, I was Mr. McLean's at the time. Um, I was the face of um, Terracuso and all. So several, you know, top jobs that um, and me good money comparison at that time. And that was my inroad to modeling. So after I had succeeded at different studios within Linters, he now you know, advised me that I may not have to just rely entirely on um, Linters as an advertising agency. I could expand my, my reach to other agencies and then asked me to register with um, a modeling agency. That was Skipper's agency. Of course, Skipper's agency was um, the number one modeling agency in Nigeria at that time and I promptly you know uh, registered with them you know it was there that I met Frank Oso who had become an established name in fashion modeling you know that is wrong with modeling so he taught me the tricks of how to you know model on the wrong way and of course as a zealous person I was within a short period I had mastered it and I started you know having shows and before you knew it it was between Frank and I that we controlled, as it were, the runway modeling sector, you know, of modeling. 
in, in Nigeria at that time, you know, coupled with, you know, the jobs, we're still doing pin-up jobs and all that. And before you also knew it, I grew to become Nigeria's first choice model, getting an award for that, which I have, you know, and um, so it was a wonderful period that I had. And if you remember then, as you, I mean, you were part of the story, these were the days when models were the ones celebrated, actually. They were the ones who got the media attention. They were the ones who rubbed their shoulders with the cream de la cream of the society because uh, most modeling shows, top notch modeling shows, were done around those who mattered in society, you know, not um, back streets kind of things and all that at that time. So you rubbed shoulders with uh, the top members of the, of the society at that time. And it was quite um, a wonderful experience. And I just hoped that those days will come back again. Now, how much were you paid for that first modeling job that you did? I cannot quite remember. But what I know at that time is that it was probably one of the highest paid job at that time. Okay. It was one of the highest paid job at that time. Even eventually when we started modeling, um, it was when I came into acting, and that's, that's a later story, that I knew that um, actors were just sacrificing, you know, you know, people did the job for the passion they had for it, not because of the returns that was in acting at that time, you know, because what we could get for one, you know, casual show, you know, it's what some people might be getting for a full month of work, um, going to the studio all the time to record, you know, those, you know. <laughs> okay. What, what, what was the highest amount you ever collected as a model? Maybe 50,000, yeah. Okay. What, what, what was for, the least amount? For, for yeah, go ahead. But for uh, full package jobs, you know, one could end up to 100,000. And that was a whole lot of money at that time. You know, for full package jobs, it would be 100,000. For um, top fashion modeling jobs, you get up to 50,000. For regular shows, you know, between five.